I'm Josh with Wapaka Community Media. We're back in. Aaron Jensen from the State of Wapaka, Ron Sari from the Wapaka School District, and we got a lot to talk about uh, this week. Uh, some big news to start with uh, that I think many city residents will like is the city uh, council voted Tuesday evening to implement a citywide garbage and recycling collection program. Yeah, so I think the important thing to start with here, Josh, is our Justin, our public works director, has been working on this for a little over a year. Um, he's done a fantastic job putting putting uh, information together, collecting responses from community surveys. Uh, a year ago, he put a survey out, 645 respondents, which is really good statistically for a survey. Um, and 87% of the respondents said that they were in favor of having a citywide garbage pickup. Um, and so that led us to last night. Um, we did, or council <clears throat> did approve a contract with Gratian Disposal. Um, and that will be a five-year contract. Uh, it will provide city residents with garbage pickup every week and then recycling every other week. Um, and just to, you know, for people who get this level of service um, now through their own individual contract with a, a hauler, uh, you know, a lot of them are spending 350, 400, even over $400 a year. Um, with that group rate, we're looking at in this first year, $151 a year approximately, or $12.65 uh, $12. a month. So it's obviously a huge savings, over $200 for many people, I think on average for $225. Um, and not only is it a savings for our city residents, uh, but it is a savings on our roads and the infrastructure. Instead of you know three or four different garbage trucks going down your street at various times, you have one. Um, and that stuff makes a difference and it, and it extends the longevity of our streets and uh, keeps them in better shape. So, um, you know, there's more to come. There's an ordinance that'll have to be passed, uh, I believe, at the next council meeting. Um, and the more information will be forthcoming from the city and the public works department uh, as we as we approach that. But, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, kind of a, a big news. On the school front, uh, we want to get out word out there that you're looking for substitutes. Tell us about that need, Ron. Yeah, thanks. We we, we have a significant shortage of sub sub aides and substitute teachers right now. You know, pre-COVID, we had over 70 different subs for teacher subs, and then when COVID hit, we started somewhere in the 30s and it went down into the teens. We started the year with 11 substitute teachers, and so. We need subs, and if anybody has an associate degree or a bachelor's degree, they can qualify to get a sub license, and you can do that uh, right at our website. Uh, go on and apply to be to be a sub. Perfect. Um, some other good news: the the community is one step closer, though not 100% official, of getting a splash pad. Tell us uh, tell us why we're a step closer, Aaron. Yeah, so it's crazy how fast time moves with these things too. So we started this conversation about a year ago um, and we talked about getting 50% of the cost of a splash pad and new playground renovation at Swan Park paid for through donations or grants or so on and so forth. Um, the Friends of Wapaka Parks and the Wapaka Park Department and Andrew Whitman have done a, a great job at um, ushering that project to where it is now. And we just got a tentative letter from the Wisconsin DNR um, about an, an award for $334,000 through the Water and Conservation Fund. Uh, and that's a grant program uh, that will help help pay for this. And that gets us pretty darn close to our 50% goal um, of fundraising. And um, we're, we're looking forward to, to upgrading uh, that playground equipment um because it's crazy but those you know the amount of use it gets after 20 years it's already been about 20 years for that playground equipment it's in need of being replaced one way or another so to be able to add an amenity like a splash pad for the community and also upgrade that with 50 percent of it paid for um that's a big deal and it's another credit to our grant our shared grant writer who uh helped and worked with andrew to submit that grant so we're excited to continue moving forward with that. Now we want to talk about a couple events coming up. The first one is Child Find, or it's also known as Community Child Development Day. That sounds like a really good uh, drawing together of different resources for young children. So what's that all about, Ron? Yeah, we have a, a great community and, a, and, and a, sig a significant number of community groups that partner with us 
to do this, mm -hmm. uh, these child development days. And any uh, child 18 months to four years can come on October 14th between four and six at the WLC and uh, get exposed to all of these uh, community groups that, that are here to support the, our, our, our youth, our children, and um, hopefully get registered for school. And if they have needs, uh, we're able to support them. Perfect, and you wanna repeat that day, time and location once more? Yeah, that's at the WLC, Wapaka Learning Center, October 14th from four to six. Perfect. Um, another event coming up, um, anyone who hasn't been downtown to see what's going on or wants to see the final product will be given a reason to in late October, Aaron. Yeah, October 29th, uh, Halloween weekend, we are looking to, on that Friday, have an event that's a joint event. It's going to be kind of playing off of what the Park and Rec has done for a number of years with their family Halloween event. We're moving it downtown to Main Street in the city square, and we're looking to, to close Main Street uh, from 4 to 8 p.m. for this event. Uh, this event is going to be a family-friendly event. We're going to have a number of things for kids. There's going to be uh, police vehicles, sheriff vehicles. Um, actually, I, I last I heard, an airplane will be trailered in from the airport, a small airplane that they can kind of check out. Um, I believe a fire truck, things like that. Uh, there will be pumpkins from Jim Miller's pumpkin display brought downtown, about 25, 30 pumpkins that'll be on City Square. Um, there will be games and crafts and things like that. Uh, of course, trick-or-treating type things for the kids. And uh, on top of that, we're also working with the Chamber of Commerce who's helped us in contacting some Main Street businesses. And obviously this has been a tough time for them. Um, wanted to ask them if they wanted to take that opportunity while the streets close to expand their premise, um, which means spill out kind of outdoors onto Main Street, possibly have a, a one-man band or whatever it might be. And, and we do know of at least four or five businesses that want to take advantage of that during the time that the street is closed. Uh, so we're excited for it. Get it on your calendars October 29th from 4 to 8 p.m. Right, now we want to talk a little bit about COVID. And Ron, one of the things the school um, has started this year was on-site COVID testing. And you um, disappointingly have found out that's not working out the way that's been intended, so that's going to be discontinued. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's going to be put on hold at this point, just because, well, <laughs> I'm tongue-tied here. I have so many thoughts going through my mind at once, I'm trying to pick out where to start. But initially, we were excited to have this opportunity on site as a service to our students, staff, and parents. And we were told that the results would come back fairly quickly and they're not coming back quickly at all. Uh, it's taking quite a long time, more time than it should. And so we believe we're better off directing our, our, our parents and students to go get tested at our local or uh, area or regional uh, testing sites for that PCR testing instead of coming in and doing that here on site. So it's temporarily on hold. We're disappointed that we have to do this, but we, we don't have any control over it. It's, it's a different entity through the state that's doing the, the, the test, uh, developing the tests and reporting it out. So unfortunately, that's, that's where we're at. And then, uh, right, you know, anyone that watches this update on a regular basis knows that Ron tracks the data really well with what's going on with COVID in the area, and that helps the school to make good decisions. And I know you want to give a little update where things are at right now. Yeah, you know, I've been talking about how we had hoped we had reached our peak a week ago, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and I was optimistic. I thought that we had, um, I know that we were told that the peak would happen last week, and it appears that it did happen last week, uh, unless uh, the data changes, because it does change uh, every day, but recently here, it looks like it peaked on the seven-day average on September 14th of last week, 26.4 was our seven-day average. Our 14-day average the next day on September 15th uh, was 23. That was the peak. And that same day, our total positives or probables over a 14-day count was the highest it's been at 324. So we're hoping that's the peak. Yesterday's data numbers came in lower than anticipated. I'm hoping that uh, today's come in low as well. 
uh, but it is not looking like uh, we're going to be able to go to move to mass optional. I'm pretty confident that uh, we're still going to have to do another two weeks uh, of mask mandatory here. And, and hopefully that will be the last two weeks uh, that we'll, we'll see. And hopefully the the COVID data drops off the off the map for us. I think, I think everyone's hoping for that improvement. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Ron, Aaron, appreciate the time to get the community update. A lot of happenings going on and um, thanks again for your time. Have a good week. Thanks, Josh. See ya.